Hey, how's it going? This will be a slightly new type of content for the channel that I'm going to be trying out. This is not a tutorial for Blender, Substance or Unreal, just to be aware of that up front. Uh, I'm just going to be kind of recapping and covering the process that went into creating this diorama, kind of themed for Halloween. It's going to be going through all of the steps from blocking out modeling, UVing, Substance and then getting it into Unreal. So check that you're watching the videos in the playlist so that you'll get them in the correct order. Link for that will be in the description down below. And yeah, as I said, it's kind of new, something I haven't really done before. It's just going to be covering the ways that I was doing things, the, the kind of thought process that went into them. And if you like this kind of content, then of course, uh, leave a like to let me know and subscribe to see more. If this is popular, I'll probably do some more as I'm kind of just learning the processes of getting familiar with 3D modeling, sculpting, and then also getting the things into Unreal. To begin, just a basic scene in Blender. I just wanted to get a kind of block out done, what I ended up calling a template. 2D skills aren't really there to concept something myself. I had a set of references and a general idea of what I wanted to create. I knew I wanted to make it Halloween themed. I had a specific sort of thing in mind, uh, but I didn't really know the kind of scope or scale and the general result that I'd be looking for. So this section, I was just creating the kind of diorama base and getting the general scale together. I knew that I wanted a few key kind of focal points, which would be the pumpkin, a tombstone, and then some decoration around the outside, something like a, a post or a fence or something like that. So I was just getting all of the scale ready to make sure that they, they meshed together somewhat. You can see here that after modeling the first tombstone, I wasn't sure on the, the shape. I wanted some kind of contrast between the, the more blocky, sharp shapes that I had going. So I've already got a, a cube shaped floor and then I had a kind of more squarish tombstone as well although I've gone for that kind of stylized warped shape uh, I decided to try and implement a somewhat different tombstone to give some contrast and shape with a, a circle being introduced and then likewise uh, it's adding a wooden fence so trying to keep the, the materials used being fairly different as well so I think the the ground is going to have a concrete or brick outline the tombstone of course is going to be uh, made of concrete uh, so the the fence I decided to go for a kind of wooden fence and the style that I'm going for, I would say, is more inspired by, you can imagine something like Fortnite. It's going to be a stylized PBR kind of effect going on. And one of the talks given early on in the development of Fortnite, actually, when they were saying about how they had a almost a rule set behind how the assets were created. Everything had to have a certain amount of kind of warping uh, or a certain sort of scaling going on to make everything clearly not be photorealistic or have that kind of realistic feel to it. But it also helps everything feel somewhat um, believable in that in the style that Fortnite has gone for and I've heard that from other people when working on stylized assets that you're obviously not going for something realistic but you want everything to feel believable within that one set or within that one environment or whatever so that's what I'm going for here I wanted everything to have a little bit of warping some kind of bend going on and to stop everything from just being perfectly lined up in a cube you can see that I've started doing things like having the the fence and the tombstone lean away from each other to give a little bit more of a, an angle to those as well. Then at this stage during the template uh, I realized that everything was kind of feeling off with the the square base so I came up with an idea for something which could potentially be uh, using a a circular base. I was thinking of having the, the top be just gravel or ground or something encapsulated in a log or something like that. I don't know why, but again, just to, to give that difference in textures and materials uh, and also based on some of the references I was looking at, a few of those things kind of came together to, to make something like this. And this at this point actually started looking a little bit better to me. So I went in and tried adding some extra assets as well to see if there was some more detail that was needed. I've already added things like the, the bricks to the floor to just add some noise and detail. I realized with the, the lamppost it started looking a little bit cluttered, so I didn't spend too much time on that one. And then it was just trying to decide whether things looked better with the, the rounded ground. And I think I was considering matching that up with the, the more angled tomb or having the, the square ground and then using the, the rounded tomb. The rounded tomb had the issue that I did want to imprint something, some kind of rest in peace kind of text, the, the general thing you'll see on the tombstone. And that then raised the issue that there wasn't really any space to place that. So I started playing around with adding in like a, a small tablet or something that we could put on here. Probably adding a little bit too much detail. Now I'm looking at it in the, the templating stage, but this, as I said, because I couldn't really draw uh, my own concept out, this did actually prove really beneficial to give me an idea 
of uh, what I wanted the final result to look like. I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time creating these assets, but they definitely gave me a really good base to, uh, to go from when I did start adding the, the more kind of tidy and final assets. Now what I'm doing here is I've just, I think I started realizing that I wanted the rounded base, which means we're adding another texture of wood in because I wanted that log around the outside of the rounded base. So what I wanted to do is start looking at adding something like a metal fence so that we could get rid of another wooden fence. And then we've got the, the concrete tomb, a metal fence and that wooden log around the bottom, which gives us just some varying sort of um, points of focal interest and textures to work with, especially when going over to substance. And with that, I settled on the, the idea. I thought everything looked nicely rounded. Uh, it all kind of fit together here, put that into a template folder and then start working on the, uh, the final assets. So I started off with the, the pumpkin. You can see me playing around and I'm going to cut some of this out, but just me failing to really uh, work out how I wanted to subdivide this and whether I wanted it to be more kind of symmetrical or have some randomness to uh, to not be quite so perfect. I ended up going with the, the more symmetrical look, but compared to other examples of uh, renders of pumpkins and things that I've seen, I wanted less detail, less kind of curves being broken in as you can see here where I'm scaling things in so it looked a little bit more chunky and just had a, a very kind of distinct look hopefully when everything's been sculpted out and finally designed. With the general shape kind of decided I'm just going to go into the isolated view here and then start playing around with getting the, the face carved out. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure again how I wanted this to look. I wanted a somewhat cartoony cutesy looking pumpkin face going on here so I'm just playing around with different sizes of the eyes the mouth the positionings obviously the closer the mouth is to the eyes the cuter it looks and that kind of um, placement and considerations going on here doing things like just adding extra edge loops so that i could get things closer together as i said really didn't know what i was doing when it came to carving the pumpkin here when I finally did settle on the, the general design, I've gone back in, haven't actually started sculpting at this point, but it's quite useful to use the sculpt tool just to smooth things out to get things a little bit more back in line with where they were. It has some really nice easing and I can pull things around just to really uh, finalize how I wanted the face to be laid out on the pumpkin. Gave it a little smirk and that really kind of got me to a point where I was quite happy with it and I knew that adding some bevels around the, the important parts of the eyes and the mouth would mean that I could easily then sculpt on this later and add the, the final detail, the, the important detail that I wanted to get in there. Moving on to the fence, now this isn't a whole lot different from the, the template that I'd created, uh, but as I said, I just wanted to, that was very, very quick, although it took me a while because I'm still relatively new to spending much time inside of Blender. I knew that I wanted to come in and create a kind of tidied up version, one with more accurate spacing and one which would let me play around with different proportions and things a little bit more easily. One thing you'll notice is that I am subdividing everything quite early on. This is something I've realized after I'd done the whole process that I really wanted to, well, I should have been working with the meshes in their kind of basic form and then subdividing them later. I knew that it was important to have them subdivided because I wanted to add these displacements and the kind of warping modifiers, but just my inexperience with Blender made me think it was a good idea to do that first when I think ideally what you want to do is work with the most basic version of the meshes that you can, just the quads where possible. Just get your basic extrusions, bevels, and whatever else you need in, and then just use the subdivision modifier later. So this is a, a good takeaway that I'll definitely keep in mind uh, in the future when I do something similar. So all I've done here is just created a single fence panel and then added an array to get the, the vertical fences, copied the, the cube over, and then just making the, uh, the horizontal fence pieces as well. Again, subdivided these a little bit too early. It doesn't really cost me too much time or effort here, so... The main thing is we've got these extra verts and edges and things that I can pull around so that we, when I do start warping things, you get that kind of clean curvature. Uh, obviously, if everything was too low poly and didn't have any subdivisions, then you wouldn't get any of that curving going on. You can see me failing to get the bevel tool working here as well. Not 100% sure why. Maybe it's because I've already subdivided things too early again, but I ended up just needing to manually bevel the important things that I wanted to keep somewhat flat here when it goes into subdividing it further for the sculpting. So that's basically what you can see here is me just applying the bevels manually to most of the outside edges and also some of the edges here just to keep those again nice and clean and looking as though they've been created as, a, as you would expect for a hard surface uh, when it gets to the sculpting. 
So now moving on to the tomb again, this is going to look very similar to the template tomb that I have. Uh, just using that for scale and guide it again, it gives me a nice idea having that template there that I want it to be warped, so I need to keep that in mind early on. Uh, it gives me a good idea that I think I got the proportions down fairly well in that template. Just a nice bit, uh, point to work from and I can somewhat keep the uh, the new version much tidier. Like I mentioned, I, I won't go into it too much, but I subdivide this far, far too soon. Uh, I could be working with just a, a few cube faces here, get the general shape and add the subdivision modifier much later. Um, but as I've mentioned, I, I only kind of realized that um, I made it harder for myself after I'd finished the whole diorama. So yeah. Then at this stage with the, the general shape kind of blocked out again, you can see that I'm going with that technique of making sure that everything's got, uh, is a little bit thinner at the bottom and has that kind of uh, exaggerated curvature and uh, scaling going on to the top side. And uh, again, that just keeps everything with a very kind of similar style inside of this piece. And then finally, I'm just going to go in and uh, be creating a rock. So I decided rather than going for the square bricks, I'm just going to use more like pebbles and rocks everywhere. There's a rock generator already built into the Blender plugins, I believe. So I think I'm using the free plugin provided by Blender. So I've just used the, the simple rock generation. It means that you do need to apply all of the the modifiers it's basically a lot of different kind of randomization and subdiv modifiers i didn't realize that early on so i've actually got an incredibly high poly rock which later on crashes blender but again learning experience uh, and then this this is just going into the uving so i've bunched this together the the most exciting part of any asset creation inside of blender uh, or any modeling tool is of course unwrapping everything so i'm just trying to get some passable UVs. I'm not great with UV mapping. Just making sure that we've got the island stretching being shown with some previous experiments I've made inside of Substance. This is definitely an important part of the process though. If you're going to be running it through something like Substance and using those kind of, uh, especially with the smart materials, uh, you can get some really good results as long as your UV map is somewhat clean. The main thing is not having overlapping verts and of course trying to keep the stretching down to a minimum. So just really focusing on that as much as possible here. Doesn't need to be super detailed but just enough that you won't see any uh, very obvious seams and everything when applying those materials and substance. That was it really. It's, it's very much the same process for all of the assets at this point. I'm um, just trying to place the seams where they're going to be less visible. So either at the back or inside or underneath of an asset where possible, uh, especially with things like the pumpkin where I wanted to make sure that was unwrapped with a lot of room. Uh, making use of the, the seams inside of the, the pumpkin itself was, was very useful. But yeah, really not a whole lot to uh, to go into here just a lot of trial and error is the main thing with UV wrapping. Adding in some extra lines, some extra edge cuts just to, to make it easier to, to apply these seams and trying to, to cut down on the stretching where possible. If you wanted to see more content like this uh, or more specific content in a tutorial form on things like this, it's probably quite clear that although I've been using Blender on and off for several years now, I haven't done it consistently enough to get to a stage where I'd say that I'm confident or really know the good processes or how to use it properly. So that's what I'm trying to learn at the moment. So as soon as I've got more of that down and I've got a better understanding of uh, good workflows and not ending up with UV maps that look like this here, what I will do, I'm happy to then cover more in a tutorial based workflow if that is of interest to people. If you want to see more content like this, then let me know in the comments down below. As I said, there's more to come in this playlist covering the sculpting, substance painter, and then getting it into Unreal for a final render of the diorama. I've also released a video covering the entire process. It took about eight hours in total from start to finish of getting it in Unreal. If you wanted to see that in its mostly uncut form, then click on the video being recommended to you at the right of the screen just here.